Okay, we're back. We're live the 12 o'clock hour with Rob Yanover. And if you know anything about Rob Yanover here on Think Tech Tech Talks, uh, you know that he is the hmm, perfect exemplar of the inventor and the entrepreneur. They could write books about Rob Yanover. In fact, he has written books <laughs> about Rob Yanover. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Rob. <laughs> Thanks, Jay. Always good to be back. It's been a while. Thank it's you. It's been a while. Uh, Rob, Rob and I sort of grew up together in the days of his, his early invention period. Actually, it was already his middle invention period. It was in the 2000s when, exactly. you know, people were, um, they put more value, it seems to me, on entrepreneurship and invention then than they do now. But that's another show, another story. So, so really, um, right. you know, let's, let's catch up. I mean, you had these ocean streamers, okay. and you, you were a one-man band. You went out, you designed them, you made them, yes. you tested them, uh, and you ultimately right. marketed them to uh, military organizations and uh, travel travel organizations uh, everywhere right. where people are gonna be over the water, where they might go down and they might, boats, boats, boats carry or land. Or land, yeah. And and now, most recently, yep, what caught absolutely. my eyes is, is you're into space. You know, I used to think you were into space in another way before, but now you're really into space. So tell us about tell us I about the, well, it's, the, it's, the journey it's, from it's, there to here. Absolutely. Okay. Well, I came here in '84 to get my PhD working on volcanoes, and during a small aircraft flight, I thought we were going to go down. It was a rented plane. I looked down, you could see just blue water, and I figured your head's the size of a coconut, they'll never see you. I invented an idea that, ironically, last week, the artist who inspired me back in Florida, I flew over Christo's artwork, we wrapped those islands in pink plastic, and I just said, if I could just get a piece of pink plastic, and that's what I did. I got a piece of pink plastic, but it kept on uh, curling up and not paying out. I invented struts on it, so it's like a centipede. A lot of my inventions are biomimicry based on nature. So I made a long orange. First it was pink, but the U.S. Navy, little macho, they didn't want any part of pink. They said, lose the pink, you got something. So I went to International Orange, proved that it worked. The little struts make a centipede in segmentation, so you have a 25 or 40 foot long orange tail. And unlike smoke, flare, sea dye, or even electronic devices, it lasts forever. And it just marks you. Because even whether you're lost in the mountains or the ocean or even in space, they still need a visual. If they know you're down there, but you're looking down for a coconut, they can't see the coconut. They can't see the rock on the hill. So it's just a very simple device. In the patent world, ironically, the broader the patent is, broader patents come from simpler ideas. So a very intricate cell phone you can design around it, but a streamer with struts to make it like a segmented centipede, very hard to design around it. So I've been doing this for years. I got involved with the military because that was the, the, the optimum people for safety were the military. So they approved it, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and just kept pushing away for years. I mean, if, if anything, the word perseverance I'm, I'm the guy. That well, yeah, but what died. about your what about your PhD? That had to have an effect on things. You had to be using some of Absolutely. what you learned. Absolutely. I mean, I, I and, and you know, I got here from Hawaii. Did a PhD at SOAS with uh, worked on submarine volcanoes off Galapagos. I got to go down to the submersible two miles down. Worked at NASA and MIT analyzing my samples, and I learned how to be a scientist and to attack problems and prove things, disprove them, be right, be wrong, debate them, do more research. And I still use that today. Everyone says, well, you're not a volcanologist. I go, yeah, your PhD, you don't use that anymore. I go, yes, I use it every day. And from UH, I got into the dual use community back then, and then Ciros and DARPA, military encouraged us to do research, and then Blue Startups more recently, and I had a licensee for 15 years, enabled me to grow the company. So I've been, this is this is a Hawaii victory, getting the streamer on SpaceX. And to me, this is the culmination of my whole life in tech. Because when I was at NASA Johnson Space Center during my PhD, I wanted to be the first guy to go to inner space, two miles down, which I've done in the Alvin submersible, and outer space. And at the time, they were taking scientists, but then the Challenger blew up, and that was the end. So. I couldn't personally get into space, but my invention is 
it lived, you know, it's well, I want to talk, I want to, talk know, to you about Europe that. Now. now, you just described okay. the the international orange and, and it emulates the structures of right. nature, and, and that's it's 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 brilliant. Right. Um, and it and uh, you were able to market it, not which is color, not, not easy color. because it was. Yeah, but you were able to market it, and uh, that that's not so easy right. when you're talking about these huge you know, military organizations and capital concentrations. And, and here's Rob and he markets it to whoever. And it's uh, like, it's like everywhere. Um, but, but let me, let me ask you this, you know, it's on the water, clearly it's on the water. It can be seen from the air. That's where, that's where I remember you to, to be right. marketing. Um, but now you're talking about under the water yes. and you're talking about in space. So what does a 40 foot streamer do under the water and what does a 40 foot streamer do in right. space? Okay, let's back up. It works on the surface of the water. It doesn't work underwater. That was just my experience. Mm -hmm. Underwater, you, you could, a diver could get stuck on a rock and pull it out and it could be in a very uh, narrow case. And then in space, the original patent said lost at land, sea or space. If the astronauts doing a spacewalk get detached, they could be a speck floating in, in space, but a speck with a 40 or 25 foot orange tail is much easier to spot. That's not what SpaceX is using it for, in theory. They're using it for the splashdown and the emergency exit in case they splash down. Nice. They're gonna be up there for three, they're gonna be up there for three months orbiting in the space station. When they come home, they're splashing down in the Atlantic and the capsule, they'll stay in the capsule, there's a parachute and there's a raft. But if they get separated in the capsule, the capsule can, can be on fire. They jump out. That's when they'll have the streamers. And that's when they'll be just like any other lost boater or lost hiker. Yeah. There'll be a little speck in a large sea and they'll want to find them. Yeah, and, the, and the, so, that'll, and save, the that'll save their lives. And in fact, it has saved exactly. lives, hasn't it? You've, you've received exactly. nice streamers notes from saves. people over the years and they've thanked you for saving their lives. Am I right? Absolutely, absolutely. That was the best feeling of all. And, and you know, I go to these trade shows, and part of the reason I'm sitting in front of you still is I built up the patents enabled me to get in the door to protect my invention. Then the marketing enabled me to keep pushing it, pushing it to all the different agencies. And then the military has used it, and it saved lives already. And a couple of guys came up to me and thanked me, and that felt good, better than any of the money I've ever earned or anything I've gotten from that, because it was like a total validation of a, of a crazy little idea you had and the perseverance to pursue it. A lot of people said, you know, quit. What are you playing with this piece of plastic for? Get a real job. But I knew it would save lives. I always <laughs> knew. I've got a million inventions. That idea I knew was a winner. And that's but you, you evolved that idea. It, was, it didn't stop it being a streamer. Uh, you, no, you, no, added, you added technology. Can you talk about that? Uh, sure. Your original streamer was just plastic film. Then ultimately, the Air Force, they liked it, but they wanted to get rid of me, ultimately. They said, look, until it's self-deploying and auto and night, night signaling, we're not that interested. So I came back. I, I used the idea of rice paper candy, and I found dissolvable plastic, the same they put the, in the dishwasher, those little packets. We made a pouch that dissolved when it hits the water. The streamer, instead of rolled up, it Z-folded. It unfurls automatically with the current. Then it has two flashing lights that have photo sensors that only activated at night. So it will flash three nights in a row, off at night, off at day, on at night. And that's in fighter jets now all over the world. The Singapore Air Force, some of our Air Force flies with it. That's, that's our ultimate product. So, and then because everyone wanted those but couldn't afford the $900,000 price tag of those sophisticated pieces of technology, I, I simplified it and used military grade chem lights for the lighting and solace grade reflectors. So I have a night component of all the streamers and it still just fits here and it fits in this little holster right there. So it fits on your belt or in your backpack. It's not auto deploy, you, you have to be conscious for this one. But still, if you're, I always tell people, if you can't swim, you're gonna die anyway. You know, so you, you gotta be able to do something. <laughs> you gotta got un unfurl a streamer, streamer so. <laughs> Well, that, that's, that's fabulous. Have, has, have, you, have your patents worked? I mean, uh, is anybody trying to make a run at uh, infringing on you? That's an interesting question. I could do an hour or two on that. Not, you know, what happened is I built on the military, on the streamer, I built on the patents with military approvals based on millions of dollars of their testing. 
So, so I have national stock numbers. So I built a whole barricade of weaponry to protect that idea. So that has patents, military approvals, national stock numbers, acquisitions already. That's different from some of my other patents. I did have a run on and that's a whole other show, but I invented, I patented the inflatable paddle board and it was an inflatable rescue board slash recreational board. You may remember that from our early show. Yeah. And what happened is then the inflatable, pa the paddle board industry, the stand up paddle board thing took off. And my patent attorney said, look, just because you invented it to lay down and paddle on, just because someone stands on it with a paddle doesn't mean it's not the same invention. So I had a major international battle because really? every company, you go to Costco, the inflatable paddle boards are everywhere. You know, oh, oh, Hobie, uh, everyone makes those. So yeah. I, I had a big, interesting story and, you know, Hardcore Inventing is my patent book, inventing book, and I need to write, uh, I'm, we're on edition two, but edition three might have a whole section on defending your path <laughs> okay i want to talk about shark tank you know that really struck me okay. that, uh, you know i don't know well, anybody who's been on shark tank and i and for, and most of the time uh, i do not envy their experiences can you talk about your experience absolutely you know it was a big risk and my brother said what are you doing you're crazy you're a legitimate inventor of technology why are you going on that show and i'm like well why not? I mean, I've always been a big fan of promoting things through the media. Ever since that show premiered, I'm like, I'm the guy. I should be on that show. I can mix it up with those guys. And they had, well, Ala Moana had an open casting call, 400 people in the morning because I didn't want to wait in the sun. I was like seventh in line. Not that that mattered. But I just pitched, made the first cut, made the second cut, made the third cut. They flew me to L.A., made the cut with all the producers. They tried to get me to do a canned speech, and I said, no, I don't, and I did it. The producer said, we love your back and forth questions and answers, but can you just be more loose on the presentation? And I looked at my producer, I said, look, I told you, let me just talk. She goes, look, do anything you want. So then they let me loose for the airing. I was in there for an hour. They all loved it, which was great. And I felt within five minutes, I, five seconds, I, I had them. I showed them the before and after pictures. And just the fact of my background being a scientist and inventor, and I had, then I hit him with all the sales we had. It wasn't just a backyard project. And Mark Cuban actually fell in love with it. He kind of fell in love with me a little, too. I was a little uncomfortable. He had a, a bit of a man crush on me, but it was cool. <laughs> he couldn't get over me being a vulcanologist and a big wave surfer. He was, all, he was all sparkly. But anyway, he was really cool. They were very polite. And they... You know, they loved it. I couldn't, when I went in there, I wanted to make a deal. And I, I even offered such a low ball price just to get one or more of them involved. And I was shocked that they didn't want to get involved. But, you know, to them, it's all about money. And they didn't see the big, you know, fl transition of flipping it to a big money product because it's tough to say safe, it's tough to sell safety. But all five sharks liked it on national TV. They played it once. Then they reran it on reruns. Then they played it 25 times and counting on CNBC. I'm on all the time. And I definitely look better because I had hair and makeup trailer. You know, they did all, they, they made me look good. And it was only three years ago. So now that, that every time they plays, I get calls from all over the world. I, I get oh, no. from all over the world that way. And yeah, it's unbelievable. I, I you know, it's been, they, they call it, and I'm part of a Shark Tank group of people that have been on the show. And they call it the gift that keeps giving, because unless unless they grilled you hard, then it's the give the gift that keeps torturing you. You know, <laughs> we had some other Hawaii inventors on there, and they gave they gave her a hard time. I had to talk her off the ledge a little bit. So it was a great experience, but I'll tell you, it's a lot. It's a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure. It's me alone with five people that want to poke holes in my whole pitch, and it's it's totally legitimate. I didn't know them. They didn't know me. Boom. Talk. And then before you start, there's a 40 second stare down and then go. And then you talk. I was in there like over an hour. And all you see is seven minutes when you see the clip. Sure. So there was no one saying, hey, that sounded good. Say that again. It's just like we're talking now. It's total free form, live, live, live to tape. It was a great experience. And then I had CBS Innovation Nation come out here. Mo Rocca, he didn't come, but Ali Ward, they oh, came. Yeah. And yeah. we did a great piece on the sea rescue. And, and they, even, they even had me dig up. I had my old invention notes from 84. 
the original drawings of the streamer and they love that so that that's on that cbs show so that was another great you know piece of media and you know and the spacex now you know i don't even know what to do with that yet i'm trying to do something because it's just i'm still in I'm still numb that it actually happened, but I met these people through the military. NASA and SpaceX are part of the safety survival group I'm part of internationally with all the militaries. And they came by my booth a couple of years ago. They come every year. And I just thought they were looking at the streamer. They called me a couple of weeks and said, no, it's going up. I'm like, okay, great. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to figure out what I can do with that piece of news. Well, do you, are you selling to- I mean, uh, if they use it- are you selling to Actually, yes, everybody? I, I, who, exactly is there what, any barrier? Is there any? Is there any? Um, you know, defense barrier. In other words, if somebody who the United States was adverse to came to you and said, uh, you know, Rob, we'd like to buy your streamers. Oh yes, absolutely. Would you? But would you be limited? I have to be careful. At certain products, like the fighter pilot one, I can only sell that to certain governments, NATO governments. But the regular streamers, because they're safety and survival, I can sell them to anyone. So I've had some really interesting countries buy them, sometimes indirectly. But also what, what I spun off of Shark Tank is Amazon. The whole point of my Blue Startups effort was to start uh, an, you know, an e-commerce business. So now, and my, my theory was women are my customers. And no offense to guys, but we're kind of idiots. We, you know, we don't care about safety. We want to buy another six pack. <laughs> women are like, hey, you're going out to sea. You're going to the mountain. I'm worried about you. I want you to come home. So, and it worked. It worked to a point. So, Amazon now sells streamers directly. So, I have a, an Amazon rep that handles that. And I don't. Sometimes, streamers end up all over the world. I don't. It's really amazing. And they're all built here in Hawaii, made in USA, made in Hawaii. I'm really proud of that. And you know, it's a piece of safety. It's nothing you cut corners on. You don't do a factory run overseas. Just well, if I if I look at Amazon, you Rob, what's, some, what's the price range going to be for your gear on, on uh, Amazon? They're from ninety five to one forty five, but the, we, they're on sale on Amazon for eighty to one twenty. Eighty is that little one I just showed you in the holster. This mm -hmm. little this little holster that clips to your belt or your life jacket. Eighty dollars. It's got lights, reflectors, streamer, and you know a nice little holster. And then 120 is the big one that goes on boats. What about so, the yeah, Coast Guard? There's, there's a range the of products, Guard, and we're trying Guard to simplify it. I, is the Coast Guard interested in your product? Coast Guard, ironically, absolutely. They're very careful not to endorse the product. So, what's happened with them, which is very ironic and a little bit of egg on their face, is they've approved it for their own boat crew survival vests. So when you see the Coast Guard guys in the orange boats, the inflatables, those guys are allowed to have and use the streamers, and a lot of them do. But they've been mum on telling Joe Boder and Joanne Boder whether they should have them. So it's a little weird. I've always, I, I never really understood the Coast Guard, but, but they must get approached all the time to the regulations. The regulations were written, written 50 years ago when flares and sea dye and other things with, with the rage. So to change those laws, you literally need an act of Congress because you have to rewrite the laws, mm. federal regulations. So I've decided it's not worth trying to go up that hill. But the code, letters of approval, approval for use, you know, it's yeah, obvious. We, have, so we just did a demo with the Coast Guard and, and it did well. So, so here you are, been, it's, it's been- It's crazy, uh, it's crazy. <laughs> So I'm from from the '80s till now. That's a long time already. Um, I mean, what's the future? I know. What's the future? What you know? If you can talk about it, what other products have you got up your sleeve? What sure. other markets are you going to approach? Uh, what are the changes in your in your really company? Excited. Go ahead. Okay. One of the most exciting projects I have going in my mind. I still can't get enough excitement generated in other people's minds. Is Again, back to me, and you know, bicycle sales are blowing up in this COVID thing because people are getting back to nature and, and transporting correctly like they should using their bodies. I, and I looked at the, the bicycle on water and they have bicycles that pedal a big fat tire and they have mm -hmm. a bicycle that, pedal, that pedals a propeller, but, but I've never seen a fish with a propeller. So I went to the 
to my drawing board and invented a water bicycle based on I got the patent, so I own the idea for 20 years. And in fact, I'll, I'll announce this publicly on your show. I'm looking for someone to get involved with me on that project. I'm so involved with the streamer. I have the patents. I work with some of the UH engineer guys, contracted with one of them. They helped me make some design and CAD drawings. So I'm at the prototype stage. I have design drawings, patents, and the idea is to make it look like a shark, the first one. And you know where I'm going with it. I'm going right back to Shark Tank. Just to get the uh, PR and, uh, no. and get a date, maybe a deep <laughs> Why not? Get Mr. Wonderful to ride on a shark tank bike. A shark bike. Because when you ride a bike on the water and see a big tail, that's the one. That's the winner. But it's not what I what I advise most inventors is to invent something small. So storage and shipping are easy. This water bike is a bit, a bit problematic because it can't be this big. So it can be inflatable, so we can make it inflatable, so it might fit in two duffel bags. So I'm looking to partner or license that, and with the goal, I don't know if Shark Tank would even do it, I'm also considering teaming with other Shark Tank people, because they try to, they try to encourage entrepreneurship. So I'm gonna say, why not two Shark Tank contestants combining, because you're feeding the whole entrepreneurism of the community and the country to come up with something new. And, and that's where I'm going with that. And, on the flip side, I keep doing my outreach thing. I go out to schools all the time. But, but wait, but wait, wait, what's the market for the uh, the shark the shark boat, the, the self the self pioneered, the self engineered, the self powered okay. self powered shark boat? Is that is that and is that for recreation? Is that for safety? What is that? Everything but recreation. People need to get across waterways, whether it's a river, a lake, an ocean, a bay. You could even perhaps race them and surf them a little, but mainly for exercise and just transportation. I mean, I could see him in Venice, Italy. You know, like instead of the gondola, the guy could be singing and pedaling. You know, and I even told the guy at UH, I go, you know, and the other thing, the, the way I judge my inventions, do I want one? Yes, I want, if I want one, be reasonable. I mean, I want, yeah. I want some crazy things, but yeah. I would, I would want a water bike. It doesn't have to look like a shark. A lot, a lot of people would want it. A lot of people. I, and I, so it's, I feel yeah, that's right. And, and I have, I have some other inventions that are frustrating in that I didn't get them launched completely. I have a pocket desalinator to convert salt water to fresh water. A pocket water flotation device. I have my inflatable rescue board. Those and my video search and rescue, I, I, I teamed with a couple other inventors on that one. But those three, I have a whole suite of other survival products that never, they, they got to the patent stage, military funded stage, prototype they work stage, but I haven't brought them to the market. And I think smartly, I focused on what I knew would work, the streamer, and kept going there. Mm -hmm. And you know, the, the, the the desalinator only makes a cup of water, half a cup of water a day, or quarter cup even, which isn't a lot. But as my buddy Louis Zamperini, the guy that was lost at sea for 90, 74 days, you only need a mouthful a day. You're not going to look good after a mouthful a day, but you'll be alive. So when, I, when the military tested the desalinator, it didn't make enough, uh, enough water. And it was a cloudy day in the Philippines when they tested it. So mm -hmm. that's still a, a, a bit of a... You know, a regret that I haven't got that to market, but you know, you can't win them all right away. So no, ever ever uh, been involved and in dual, ever been involved in dual use research? Uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, the whole the whole Hawaii, the state of Hawaii used to have a big program. Do uh, you remember that with with Ciros, which was DARPA military money, and they were selecting products that had like the streamer, which is good for the military and good for civilians. My desalinator, good for everything I've invented in the survival is dual use. And that's why I always had a, a bit of an edge over some of the pure military research people mm -hmm. that are just making some sort of drone or some sort of missile, something that, that doesn't translate to selling it on Amazon too, that help regular everyday people. You know, Rob, you were going to talk about your visits to the schools and your discussion with you know right, right. kids and potential uh, entrepreneurs and i i would really like to hear about that i would like to hear what you tell them Absolutely. i'd like to hear your advice the advice you give them about being an entrepreneur and an inventor well 
Well, go ahead. I, I mean, first of all, the number one thing I tell them is take that phone, turn it off, and throw it in the water. Those phones are killing kids. They're frying adults and kids. I've been anti-phones for 10 years. And just remember one thing. Steve Jobs didn't let his kids use them, okay? And when I was a kid, if you had a color TV in your pocket, we, if you had a color TV and watched it all day at home, we made fun of you. Now it's okay to have a color TV in your pocket? No, it's numbing all our brains. We're seeing beautiful color pictures instead of being outside and thinking. I want to have a phone that works in black and white, like, like mine, where, and then I want to think in color. I don't want to look in color. So kids need to turn everything off, go out in nature, and I give them inventor's kids. A little, I give them a pencil and a piece of paper, and that's it. Think of an idea, write it down on a piece of paper. That's it. Have a discussion. What about entrepreneurship? What about commercializing your idea? What about uh, making a living? Right. Well, of course. That's. I mean, I, I wrote a book, Hardcore inventing that talks about all those steps how you protect your invention through patents promote it through the media media and then try to license it or sell it on your own i'm all about entrepreneur and my whole thing with kids is don't quit your day job so you can quit your day job because it <laughs> takes twice as long to bring <laughs> an invention to market than you think it takes twice as much money and the amount of pressure there's a, whatever, there's 160 hours in a week. If you have a 40 hour job, you still have 120. If you sleep for another 40, you still have another 80. You have plenty of time. Stop looking at your phone, do the work at night and weekends and put. You know, you know, Rob, we, we, we talked with uh, you know, Shanoa Fonsworth last week. Uh, uh, you must know her of uh, uh, yes, Startup. I know Shanoa. Of and, course. Um, one of the things we talked about was, um, you know, reimagining the Hawaii economy. Um, you you stand alone, really, or in a very small right. group of inventors and entrepreneurs that have actually succeeded uh, over the past twenty years. And um, you right. know, I'm wondering what you think uh, about the possibility of diversifying the economy and allowing for the development of a, a tech industry that will follow the kind of things that you've been doing. Is it is it possible in Hawaii? I think so. I think you take this money, whether it's a small amount or a large amount, and you people are driven to compete. I think you have inventing contests like Shark Tank at all levels. First, you know, elementary school, you get 50 bucks and pancakes or chocolate. And high school, you get 5,000. College, 10,000. Incentivize people to invent, number one. Number two, and I've said this for years, we got to have tech dorms. We got to get expensively, not only so they can afford it, so they can cross pollinate. Most of the great inventions are made by people inventing outside their field. How am I going to learn about medicine if I don't hang out with a doctor or a researcher? How am I going to learn, you know, that's, that's if you hang out with the same people all the time, you don't culturally too. So the, the, the great inventions and ideas, even in college, came up when you were socializing, hanging out and playing sports in the bars, whatever it is. And I, I think we can do it here, but I think you got to open it to everyone. Give everyone money, promote ideas. I've been saying this for years, and and, and you you want a product at the end of the day. We want it into product. That's why I like Shark Tank. Yes, there's some cheesy products on there, and yes, they're for lazy people. They're you know to me the phone is just making us all fatter and lazier. That's the whole goal of every technology, and that's that I don't like that. But at the end of the day, people will appreciate a good product. I just bought a product that. It's for my sink. It's some invention with a patent that has holes. So even if there's, you know, residue in the bottom of the drain for the kitchen sink, it still flows through the hole, the plug, so it doesn't get clogged up. <laughs> Simple, <laughs> easy. I bought it. So, yeah. <laughs> and even when I go around to the kids, they have great ideas. Kids have the best ideas. They're not already polluted like we are as adults, learning what you can and can't do. So, yeah. I mean, I have a lot of faith in the kids. I just say reward them, make it prestigious, put them in the paper for their little invention. There you go. Or, or put them on think tech. Put them on think tech. Put them right here. 
And uh, it's not like Shark Tank, but it, it does have a benefit here in Hawaii. Well, Rob, thank you. You know, it's great to catch up with you. And in many, in many ways, you're the same guy that I knew. And I remember asking you one time, will you still talk to me when you're, you know, rich and successful? And you said you would. And here you are talking to me. How nice. <laughs> Of course, Jay. Anytime. It's my pleasure. I love your show. I love the format. I love, I love the chemistry we have. Call me yeah, anytime. The same. The same. Thank you. So so nice and to I'll, see you. I'll, I'll, put, to put Mark, I'll put Mark. I'll put Mark. I'll put Mark Cuban on hold when you call me. Okay. <laughs> Rob you on over. I love you, man. Take care. All right. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Jay.